Update. The GS got stolen last night. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today you join me on the GS. Christy's here. And we are off to Europe. We are gonna do a little tour. I'll put the tour up on the screen now so you know pretty much where we're going. But we're gonna go down to France. Um, we're gonna go further down into Fr even further southern France to Annecy and then across to Italy. Uh, where we're going to go to one of our, or a region that both of us quite fancy, which is called As well, it's Asti, the, the city of Asti and uh, Alba. Don't know which one we're going to stay in yet, but they do uh, tasty wines, Asti Spumanti, which if you've got a sweet tooth like we have, uh, then it's pretty great. So we're going to go there, check out some nice roads, check out some nice views, really keen to see the Alps. And then we're going to go across to Lake Como, stay there for a night because neither of neither of us have ever seen Lake Como and uh, following on from that we are going to head into the Swiss Alps and then check out what the Grimsel Pass is all about as well as the Furka Pass and um, we're not going to do the Susten Pass because I, I know I'm probably pronouncing these really badly but um, that's how they look for a, an English speaking person so yeah you can correct me if I'm wrong for sure as everyone always does but yeah we're not gonna we're gonna miss out one but we're gonna do two of the others and then we're gonna try and find some tasty chocolate and cheese and just do touristy stuff but just mainly explore Switzerland and what Switzerland has to offer it's currently a rainy day I say rainy it's just cold in the morning and we're going down to Folkestone to catch the Euro tunnel there was a weird Microsoft outage yesterday, which was, um, I don't think it affected the tunnel, but it affected all the airlines and stuff like that. So hopefully we're all good and on time. But yeah, I'll take you through that experience. If, uh, if doing a trip to Europe is something you're interested in doing, then maybe this series is uh, gonna be good for you. That alongside my other two trips. This will be different to my last two Europe trips that I've done if you are a regular viewer of my channel. This one's gonna be a nice chilled one, more about the sights and more about exploring rather than just finding the dirtiest roads possible in you know Europe. Which and and we're we gonna we're gonna be going on some nice roads. It's gonna kill me to go on a, a GS around the Furka Pass, but it's probably a good thing because the speeding fines in Switzerland are astronomical. So if you do go into Switzerland, you don't want to be speeding. But yeah, we're heading down to Foxton now, so I'll catch you probably there or when we uh, are in France, heading down to Troyes as that is where we're staying on the first night. I think Troyes and Reims are good, or Ras are good points to always go to, to sit, the, you know, to have your first night. So yeah, this trip's no different. We're gonna go down to uh, Troyes and uh, chill out there. See you in a bit. I do admire these guys in front. He's got his Crocs on his side of his bike. Nice area, this place, to build a big channel tunnel. Look at it, it's engineering mentalness. A few minutes later. Yeah, just arriving into Troyes now. Uh, it was pure motorway the entire way, so a good, um, a good three hours of motorway, three and a half hours, something like that. It does take its time to get down from uh, Calais to, to Troyes. I would sometimes stay in Reims, Rath, depending on where you are going or what your trip is, but we wanted to get down as far as possible. Uh, so we can get as southern as possible quickly without having to do all this tomorrow. So a bit more motorway tomorrow Still very flat around here wind very windy like in northern France I just find very windy and I've never seen so many combine harvesters to be I know it's all farmland rural But so many of them never seen it literally about hundred miles worth of combine harvesters in every other field. It's crazy But yeah, I'll uh, maybe get some footage of the town of Troyes if you're thinking of staying here and if not, I shall probably catch you back tomorrow on the bike when we're heading down to Annecy. See you in a bit.
<laughs> right guys, today we're leaving Troyes. We're heading down to Annecy uh, via a place called Arlay. Uh, the reason being we're on the motorway is just to get that mileage in, just to get down as quick as possible. Otherwise it's about, a, I think, a roughly a seven, a seven hour trip down to Annecy. So I'll, I'd like to do as much nice roads as possible with nice views and rural France, etc. Mainly because I want to forget. Forgets down here or just something else. But yeah, we're going to do motorway for about two hours, just under two hours. And then we're going to head on to the nice back roads of France. And then yeah, down to Annecy, which is meant to be quite a nice city. Has a massive lake. So looking forward to getting there. Nothing real of nothing of real interest at the moment to really give you guys. So I'll probably log off and I'll see you again when there's more to look at other than just farms and windmills. See you in a bit. Nice little. You want a photo? Okay. So this is Arlay, also a nice spot. Look at that. You wanna go here? Oh, that's a nice spot. Ooh. Arlay. Oh. Wow, this gravel is slippery. I don't like it. Well, that's two hours on the uh, motorway done. And now we're just going to mooch through the rest of the countryside. Look at these flies. And welcome to Arlay. Very nice. That'd be quite a nice one, it's a bit like a Bob Ross photo where you can paint the whole paint the whole landscape. It's quite cool seeing the Alps from a distance. I don't remember seeing them last time. You don't you don't ever realise how high you are either, but when you look at them, when you're this level, even though we're quite high, when you look at the Alps from here, you can see they are really high. No one around either, like I haven't seen a person on the road and since we got off the main road. This is just all just no one. I have a feeling this could potentially be part of the Route de Grande Alps. Maybe, but I'm not entirely sure. It might not be yet, yeah, it might be further south. But that would explain the, um, I just saw a media thing like on the, on the road. And it would also explain the racing style curbs back, back there. But I think I'm, I don't, I don't remember the Grand, the, um, the Tour de France starting this high, but I'm not sure. cheese bar. <laughs> so guys, we're just leaving Annecy. Very nice place, historic town. Would recommend. Some nice food, although the service wasn't the best. We were waiting for ages. But I'm sure that's not the case in every place. Anyhow, we're just leaving now and we're off to Asti in Italy. And we're going to go directly through the Alps. Uh, we're going to go through Val d'Isere and take the nice sort of like Alp route to Turin and then jump on the motorway for the last little bit just to get there to make up time. Otherwise, if it was just all beautiful roads, then we would be doing, riding for about six and a half, seven hours. So we didn't fancy that. So six hours is about where we're at. 
which is quite nice throughout the whole day. But yeah, check this out. Look at that, that's a painting right there. That's a painting you should do, and I've got it on my camera for you. Just mountains, just keep going, hole in that mountain. Stunning. Right, I'm gonna do a cheeky overtake here. around here yeah I, we literally did this I, I recognize the road it's mad yeah I know we're gonna go up and up and up and up then go down and then onto a motorway for fuck knows how long All the mountain roads are kind of like this. Beautiful, isn't it? I need to get you a mic so people can hear what you're saying. Ah, oh, GS. So many GSs around here. If you don't get a GS, you're not you're not in the team. You're not in the club. No, we're going to go all the way up that zigzag into the top. Yep. Yep. Oh, look at this. Cheeky knee down. Actually, it's a bit cambered. <laughs> Don't be scared. Cool, isn't it? We're probably going to go to the very top, so you'll see a viewpoint. Not that we have... We won't have time to stop, but it'll be cool to see. Ah, oh, go on, son. Gravel in the middle of the road there. This GS is so good with torque, it makes everything so nice and easy. You can see the road over there, look. you see over there, you can see it zigzagging up. Eight hundred meters. Wait time lapse this. Feeling a bit scared yet? Don't don't look right. Nice, isn't it? Oh, it's all really nice. But yeah, but as long as it's not a fire. I think about it, I think about it less. When you've got someone on the back, I think about the drop more than I do usually. Yeah. When it's me, I don't really mind. It is a drop when you look down there, but you can't really focus on it. Otherwise you'll probably screw yourself over. This is great. So glad I came this way. I love it. Alright, I'm going to sign off and save my battery res. Or I just keep it on actually and just roll it out. Look at that. My eyes are looking forward, but my camera's looking right. This is a good drone spot as well. Don't go, don't go straight, don't go straight. There's the uh, ski lift look. Look at this, so stunning, isn't it? We're so high. And not on cannabis.
But this is the road that I want. This is what I wanted. This is what I came. This is the type of road I come to France for. Just because of the, I love the views. I love this kind of like funky corners. I do like the fast knee down stuff, but this is also just as nice. There's someone up there just taking off with, um, on a parachute. Look, they just took off. Look at that. That's about as there. Right, I'm going to sign off until something else comes along. I would definitely recommend this route if you've never been to Europe, to France, never tried the twisties. This is the sightseeing part, but also quite fun to ride. Got to be a little bit careful of stuff on the floor. And cyclists, very popular route with cyclists is the route de Grand Alps. It's obviously in the Tour de France, but they're not that in the way. We can live with them. This van's actually going quite quick. This, we're now at the top. Higher than snow. Fox photos, look. Remember that. You gotta remember that guy. Remember this number. Fox photos France. Yeah, remember that, we'll get our picture. I saw a couple of these last time. And this is the top. What's the view behind that? Like, any good or is it not as good as it was before? No, you can park actually here where this is. Where's this guy going? Should we go here? What's that? Don't blink. That's it. Nice. We're off-roading, aren't we? Ready? Oh, give him the perfect sign. Oh, nice. Did he smile? Get ready to go down. I never turn my GoPro off. This is a drone spot. This is a drone spot. This is uh wow, that's windy. Maybe it's a bit maybe it's a bit too windy for the drone. This is a ski resort. T I think it's called Teens or T I G N E S Teens. I know this place because I got fuel there last time. I definitely want to fly the down the drone here. Even if I just fly it here to avoid the wind and get a picture of the, the dam. Crossing the dam, beautiful dam in Teens. I think it's Teens, is, it, is that how you pronounce it? T-I-G? That's something, like, I don't even know where you spell it. There's a nice ski resort anyway, just up here. Just crossing the dam, cue the drone shot.
I think this is one of my favorite bits of the trip is like you go past seas towards Val d'Isere and it will take you past this dam and it's stunning wow the eyes need some time to adjust there smell that <sighs> smells real funky GoPro is GoProing look at that water dripping down so sick sorry thought it was a speed camera there's uh, the ski resort up there and I guess that's where you do a lot of skiing in the winter I think it's called Teens I don't think it's called Tigmies doesn't make any sense lovely it's pretty insane that this is all damned water wow I've got two and a half minutes wait it's quite interesting the way it tells you how long you've actually got to wait a few moments later not a bad bridge oh 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 that smells like raw poop damn <laughs> So from the noise to the mouth, you will feel the, the taste of the grape. So peach aroma, apricot. Hi, good morning, ladies and gents. Today we are leaving the province of Asti. So if you haven't been to Asti, it is a region known for its wines, also Alba. Asti and Alba are a very big wine region. So wherever you look, like you can see now, it's just filled with vineyards producing various different wines from Asti. I'd really recommend uh, a tour here for tasting some wine and see the kind of views you get when tasting wine. So if you're into wines, and I'm definitely into wines, it's, a, it's kind of a must and it's like ideal for what you want. It hits, it hits the spot big time. One thing I would say is we're coming in uh, July, late July, and it's scorching hot. Yesterday, I'd had enough of the bike yesterday. We had a good six, six maybe a bit longer, six and a half hour trip yesterday from Annecy, Annecy uh, going through the Alps, which was stunning, but it, it was a lot. And Italy is a bit of a bitch when it comes to motorways and uh, just general traveling around there's loads more speed cameras loads of everything and it's just a bit of a nightmare like yesterday I went through the wrong toll and that resulted in me getting fined which is my own mistake um, but I was it was like 36 degrees I was hot and bothered I just wanted to get to where I was going and I went through the wrong wrong section and there's lorry was behind me and they're just driving through at pace and I, I, I got out of the way but essentially I didn't get a ticket so that's a fine for me and I, I paid it just got rid of it done whatever I'm over it but um, yeah I'd come a bit later in the year or a bit earlier when it's a bit cooler because it is scorchingly hot but a stunning region um, there's and also about the motorways the tolls are like every 10 seconds there's so many tolls in Italy they're less than France but the motorways are not as good as French motorways However, they still charge you to go through them. So yeah, bear that in mind. But yeah, look at this. You know the houses on the top of the hill, chateaus. That's what it is, isn't it? Chateaus. So yeah, like lots of vineyards with chateaus on top. And everyone's just making wines out here. It's so nice. So today we're heading down to, um, or across, and we're going to Como. So we're gonna chill out in Como. It's about three and a half hours away of back roads which I don't mind I don't want to go on the motorways anymore because they're honestly horrendous and boring so this is I'm happy with this nice little sunflowers on the side of the road I'm happy with this all the way to Como um, I'll catch up with you on the way if there's some nice viewing if not I'll see you in Como it's the world's longest road very very vast It is nice and windy. 
Okay guys, and we have arrived in Como. I haven't actually seen the lake yet, but I'm assuming it's about behind that tree there. Sat nav is impossible to read because the sun is in it. But yeah, it's a very hot day, 33 degrees at the moment. So on the bike is pretty awful actually. But we're gonna chill out, get there. Just do it how Italians would and just weave in and out, as I've learned. So yeah, we're almost there. I'll, I'll uh, check back in when we get up to the hills a little bit because we're staying up there somewhere. Even though the battery's dead. Hey, Como. Well, there's two cars. You get to the best road in the world, there's two cars that are holding you up. But, it's not all about speed, this one. It's more about just the views and back on just briefly just to show this landscape we're not even at the Furka Pass yet there's a wind turbine in front lower than we are lovely So welcome to the Furka Pass and what you can see in the distance over there is the Grimsel. Pretty stunning, highly recommend if you like scenery and nice roads and snow. Wouldn't recommend if you don't like heights. Oh I can't believe my GoPro stayed recording for more than 10 seconds. might have pulled through on the moment of I need it. Here's the famous hotel. So we're getting a drink. Someone's having some alpine thirst quenching water. Some nice cars up here as well. Obviously the place to go if you like nice roads. Do you want to stop here? So there is the Grimsel. And looking back where this fancy waterfall is, that is the Furka. Fuka, not sure how to pronounce it. Both really renowned passes in Switzerland. And I would also recommend it. Just stopped off by um, the hotel on the Fuka Pass. It's in every photo if you Google the Fuka Pass. Um, we had a burger and a sandwich. Burger was not great, I'll be honest. They could improve. But the sandwich was good. And I had ham and mustard. Kept it simple and it paid off. 
The picture of the actual burger was not that appetizing though, I will say that. Look at that. That's what you want to see on a road. It, you want to see it just wind up like that. You don't get many more picturesque shots than that. Like, wow. There's the Furka Pass with the Belvedere, or whatever it's called, the hotel. We've got our mate on his GS in front of us, who's Swiss, so he must know the roads. We'll call him Bob. Bob the Swiss man. I don't know a typical Swiss name. Roger. Look, immediately if I think of France, uh, not France, Swiss, I'm thinking Roger Federer, cheese, speeding fines, and chocolate, and watches as well. Lint, lint chocolate's a, bit, a little bit overrated for me. Not really my thing. I want to get all of this pass on the GoPro if possible. We're rolling, this is the start of the Grimsel Pass. You can see on the maps, just look at it. Just cars going up and down. Switzerland reminds me, it reminds me of those just perfect landscape paintings or of you know those things that people make with sand and grass first corner we'll overtake this car and the cyclist Lots of people cycling up here. Absolute nutcases. At least my GoPro's on. And the mic's plugged in. That's something. We'll get some footage out of this trip. Can't lean too far on this bike because I, uh, I did earlier and scraped the foot peg. Or not the foot peg, the bottom stand, I think. Should have just been aggressive, but never mind. Rather be safe. Ooh, pothole in the middle of the road. We're clear, little clear to go around. Yep, this will do. <clears throat> this will do nicely. I don't think I'm going to talk, I'm just going to film it and just sit back with a cup of tea and watch and then plan your own trip to do it. Christy's going to buy a bike and do it herself. Solo. <laughs> Be free. How Gucci would it feel to have a pee off the side of this mountain though? Just peeing off the side of the mountain. That guy's brave as hell. Getting cooler. Fifteen degrees, which beats this morning's thirty-two or three, whatever the hell it was. Oh. Literally 
literally in the clouds. GoPro's still rolling. It's gonna get all of the all of the grimsel and the good bit of the furka. So well done, little GoPro battery. Pedestrian crossing. Oh, the... Yep, here's the water. That's rather nice. We'll come again and bring my kayak. Yeah, I'd like to dip in that. I feel great, I reckon. This is the way down. Another dam. Oh, the wind is strong. There's another dam as well over there. They just dam all the uh, all the water, don't they? Get some power. It's three dams in one shot. what would happen, they must do some sort of assessment. Dam technology is pretty insane, but I have no idea how a dam works. I, obviously I get the fundamentals that it blocks water, they use that as energy and they can release it. Um, I don't know how you, I would even, I don't, I can't get around it in my head how you'd even start to build a dam. I'm sure it's more simple than uh, it comes across. Right, signing off. Can't cyclist, don't delay me. Don't delay me. Oh, look at that one sweeping corner. There'll be a car coming so I can not overtake the cyclist. He's doing 50 kilometers an hour. Which is quite impressive.
Oh, I'm already recording. Yeah. Yeah, it's still recording. It won't be long. Uh, it's actually quite a long tunnel. Wow. Just wow. Rather than you need some. This is so stunning, this area. Even this is a saucy corner. I mean, we've got a GS, we can actually off-road in it, you know? I'd fail miserably if I were throwing in a GS. I'd... I can't really look right now, but... I think we're going to be looking at it, I'm not sure. Our hotel's up there, up on this side of the hill by the looks of it. So that's what's house. Alright, so two owls that have been carved into a bit of wood. How lovely! That brings us from Como to where are we? In the Tekershen. Panorama Hotel Wagon Her. I, I, I butchered saying that, I don't know how you say it. I love the sound of this bike under load, it sounds great. It's like a big sloppy fart, it's like bah. This doesn't look fun. Blind corners that are 180. Panorama restaurant. I think this is this is it, yeah. I'll leave it in gear, but we are staying here. Is it a restaurant? Oh, what was that? It's a random goat, yeah. Sweet, look at that for a view. Very nice indeed. Let's catch, catch you all tomorrow. Somewhere in Switzerland. Into something. Oh, it says there. The Panorama Hotel in Wagenkur. You ready? Wagenkur. Wagenkur. Look at the view. Such a good view from this hotel. Very nice hotel as well, I'd recommend. The Panorama Hotel Wagenkur. Very peaceful. The only thing you'll hear is goats with bells on their collar. And that is all. Got a nice ride now to... Actually, don't even know where we're going. Somewhere in France. We're just going west. So, yeah. I do like Switzerland. I know there's a thing about the speeding, but... You can enjoy it without going too fast. Just have the moments of fast. 
and just follow the locals what they do. Generally the rule I stick by. I do feel like the Swiss are quite spoilt with their roads. Straight straight out of the hotel and this is what we get. Just look at it. It's just great. But you can never get away from the camper van. So yeah, if anyone's curious, I'm using Beeline's Moto app. There's a couple of things I do like about this app, a couple of things I don't. The things I do like, and I, maybe I just haven't used it enough and I don't know what I'm doing, but it doesn't tell me the speed limit. It doesn't tell me the speed limit of Switzerland, or wherever I am. <coughs> Which is actually quite annoying in Switzerland because the speeding fines are so heavy. And also I can't use it um, landscape. It doesn't let me on my app. Maybe that's different and maybe I should buy the little dongle, but I can switch between this and the original beeline view, which is li the little arrow. But to be honest, I prefer the map, so. Yeah, that's what I'm using anyway. And then if I, if if I'm on sort of motorway, I'll just use Google Maps or, you know, the a Apple Maps. But yeah, the Beeline app, you can generally, you can type in fun, fun routes or fast routes, and it will sort of show you a good route. I have found it's been a bit hit and miss with regards to, sometimes it's just taken me through towns, but eventually got to a really nice route. I'd like to know how, um, how it works it all out. It's quite interesting. But uh, yeah, overall it's been pretty good, and I, will, I would use it again. I really want to have a go on one of those things as well, look. Look how many of them there are. Very cool. We'll come from the top of the mountain up there, look. Welcome to Interlaken. Everyone is on their gardening in Switzerland, everyone. It's a little moped. Look at that thing. That's so sick. That's so cool. I want one immediately. I've no idea what that was. Little two stroke. But this is what you can do. You can go on an adventure with a 125. Like. No, that was a two-stroke. I don't know what capacity that bike was. Maybe even a 50, I'm not sure. 50, a 90, maybe even 125, but they're going very slow. So I'm saying they're probably a 50 or a 70, but I don't know if I got it on camera, what that bike was. Maybe someone in the comments can let us know. Morgan. But yeah, you could do a CBT and you could tour Europe. I think, I think. I'm not sure about the licensing on that one. But you could do, you could have a 125 and tour the UK at least. Train, Swiss train. Okay, back in rural France. Just stopped off at the Golden Arches. That is because nowhere seems to be open midday in France for food. You can just get drinks or dessert, which is, you know, I'm sure that's common knowledge, but to me it was not. But yeah, McDonald's is open, so we got some lunch. And now we're cracking on. We've got about 40 minutes left, 45 minutes left. And yeah, it's nice not to look at the speed all the time, especially when you get near the edge of Switzerland. And it's just like France anyway, so. Nice just to crack on a little bit, not worry too much about being caught speeding and losing like thousands of pounds. So, um, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a 
playing an Ibis Styles tonight as well, which is apparently a bit Gucci. Yeah, it's nice to see the back end of France, like the rural part of France, that people wouldn't usually go through. It's nice to see all this rather than just sit on the motorway and get to places quickly. I'd rather spend a couple more hours and go somewhere different. I don't need to indicate, but... Okay, we're rolling. So, penultimate day, and we are heading out of Beckinson. Can't say I'd recommend Beckinson. It's a bit naff, if I'm honest. But we didn't even leave the hotel. We had a nice, grim meal at the Ibis. And uh, yeah, we're heading on to Ras, Reims today. So via Troyes, sort of Troyes or Troyes, we're going through Troyes. Uh, through the countryside, a little bit of motorway. Not really too much to see scenery wise today or anything else really for the remainder of the trip. It's sort of just getting home now. We're out of the Alps, they're long gone. Uh, we are in the French countryside though, which is still pretty nice. And obviously you can stop off at towns on the way back or little little villages or whatever and you have that nice rustic feel to them so you can have like a bit of a baguette or something you know really embrace the french lifestyle well, we're going right here apparently so yes i won't bore you with other footage of this uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the footage so far i'll catch up with you when we get to Reims, chat for now. And we're in Reims. Right guys, that was the last of the footage. We're currently in Reims and we're gonna get on the motorway to go home. And the weather outside is grim so nothing much to film today hope you enjoyed the video and i'll catch you on the next one ciao for now update the gs got stolen last night yeah okay went to the local police station they've confirmed that the bike's stolen which is great awesome apparently it's the most stolen bike in france some shit i don't know now I'm going to the National Police Station to launch a complaint here. Hopefully it's open. Okay, I'm currently in a French supermarket. I don't even know what it's called, but... Suitcase Ahoy. To try and get home now. French police can't do anything, basically. We all knew that. No one can ever do anything if your bike gets stolen. Um, and now... I just got paid for the suitcase and get go and get all my stuff and maybe look at the trains or flights. I don't think there's any flights left today. So maybe the Eurostar. <laughs>